Okay, I'm going to take you through the 2019 On the Table host workshop webinar edition. Um, this is pretty much going to be a short and sweet version of the information you would get in a in-person host training. Uh, we wanted to offer this to everyone just in case if they couldn't make any of the ones that we were uh, hosting throughout the community. First and foremost, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Eric Aquino, the Community Impact Associate here at the Community Foundation for Palm Beach and Martin Counties, uh, joined by the rest of the team. As you can see here, Stephanie Kohansky is probably the main person you've communicated with uh, if you're a already registered table host. Um, you may have also um, interacted with Alexander Boyle as well. Uh, we also have Daryl Houston and Jane Mary Reisman on our team. Uh, and that rounds out everybody that is uh, heading up this project for On the Table. Just kind of give you a lowdown on all we're going to cover today. Um, we're just going to kind of give you a brief overview of what On the Table is um, and why you should do it. Um, we're going to go over all the different materials we provide you through our website. Uh, we'll kind of walk you through how to set up a table. Um, We'll kind of give you some, some tools to practice some conversations as well um, ahead of your actual on the table day. Uh, we'll tell you how to work um, with your uh, conversation participants after the conversation is done. We'll talk a little bit more about the survey and the data. That's kind of more like the tangible uh, takeaway from the whole of the event. And um, if you have any Q&A, we'll tell you how to uh, ask us some questions. So jumping right into it, um, what is on the table and why is the Community Foundation participating in it? Um, I would say that uh, the most important thing that we saw in creating our three-year strategic plan, which we're in the third year of, was really kind of stepping into a more convening and leadership role in the community. Uh, we really want to provide on the table as a service to the community, both with our nonprofit partners, but also with everybody, residents, businesses, um, anybody and everyone can benefit from on the table. And we really believe that. And that's why we're offering this to everyone. And that's why also we're going to make the community impact report a fully public uh, tool. Um, we'll get more into that in a little bit. Basically, that is comprised of the survey results that we're going to be taking on the day of on the table. What exactly is on the table? Well, it's basically just a day of community conversations. We really want people from all walks of life, um, all backgrounds, um, all areas of both Palm Beach and Martin County to really come together and just have a day of, of civic engagement, um, to listen to each other, to strategize how to make a difference. Um, and you might say, you know, what makes this, you might ask what makes this different than all the other convenings I've been on been a part of and i would say that almost all of them if not all of them tend to begin off um almost like a negative launch point so oftentimes people are convening to talk about issues and they just start off talking about what's wrong uh, on the table is unique in that it really starts off with what do you love about the area that you live in and what do you love about living here in south florida um and so we really want to um encourage, you know, starting off these conversations on a positive note um, and kind of letting that be the guiding force for uh, the conversations that we have. You might ask yourself, why should we participate in On the Table? Well, there's benefits for everybody, just like I said earlier. Um, uh, if you're an organization or a business, it's, it's a really good chance for you to engage your community, um, both the people that you serve and the in the areas that you exist in. Um, if you're just a normal everyday citizen, um, it's just a really good chance for you to further um, engage your community. Um, and it really does actually enable people to take action. And we're gonna get to a little, we're gonna get into that in a little bit. I also wanted to just kind of go over the different materials that we have and all of this available for download at onthetablefl.com. You're going to hear me mention that website a lot just because it's really going to be the hub for where you can get all of the necessary information, materials, resources, videos, anything. Um, as you can see on this list, I mean, we really try to arm all of our table hosts with as much information, as much resource, 
um, as possible. And obviously too, we're always open for questions. So feel free to email on the table at, at cfpbmc.org. Again, I'll, I'll have that both at the end of this slide and in the link below. But as you can see here, we give you um, the host guide, we'll give you logos um, and an uh, event invitation that you can customize for your own organization. Same thing with an e-newsletter, um, we'll arm you with the conversation prompts, um, a host wrap-up sheet, which uh, I'll get into a little bit more in a little while as well. Um, what I wanted to kind of park it on though was the meal reimbursement procedure. Um, and that's something new we're offering this year for uh, just our nonprofit hosts. Um, we um, are offering our nonprofit hosts the ability to uh, apply for a meal reimbursement um, as long as they fill out the host wrap up sheet and get 50% um, of their participants to fill out the survey. Um, it's an honor system, but um, we'll kind of tell you how you can. Um, uh, submit your host wrap-up sheet in a little bit. Um, the youth toolkit is something new as well uh, because we're offering um, a youth survey this year. Last year we just did not have the capacity to to do both the youth and an adult survey. Now that we've got a year under our belt, uh, we really feel comfortable and confident that we um, can and should offer the survey to the youth that participate on the table because their voices matter as well. So last year, um, we had a very open, very broad uh, range of conversation topics. Um, we kind of let the hosts and the areas kind of dictate uh, what they want to talk about. Our conversation prompts were highly generalized, and we really feel like we got some good, um, good feedback from that. And this year, we want to kind of hone in on some of the responses that we got from both the surveys, from um, just us talking to people that participated. Um, and so we're, we're asking all of our hosts to focus their conversation on one of these three topics, uh, housing, economic security, and education. Um, we have specific prompts for each of those three conversation topics. Um, now you might ask yourself, well, should we do all three of them or just one of them? We suggest just doing one of them just so you can really dive in deep. Um, and then if you, you might be saying, well, the work that I do doesn't necessarily directly correlate to one of these three topics um, to which we've been really just trying to communicate that we feel like they're specific yes but also still broad to where you can contextualize it uh, one of these topics for the work that you do um, you know if you have an organization that works in the arts you can talk about how um, arts education is important you know to be in the school systems or how um, you know housing or economic security is difficult if somebody wants to pursue a full-time career as an artist. So we really think that there's a lot of different opportunities for you to uh, really contextualize one of these three topics for, um, for anybody. So once you've chosen your topic, um, we want you to, to decide if your table is going to be public or private. If you have a public table, uh, if you tell us uh, with enough time, we'll make sure to help promote your public table both on our website and through social media and all that fun stuff. Um, if you want to keep your conversation in-house, be it for your family or for your organization, that's totally fine too. Um, we still ask that all our hosts register just so we know who all is out there. Um, and also we wanna just really make it clear that we think the conversation would be best with eight to 12 people per table. Now that's not to say that you should only limit it to eight in general. Um, if you're expecting more than 12 people, then we suggest just breaking all the different people up, uh, the participants that is, um, you know, and really just incorporating as much space as possible to kind of get uh, the groups uh, smaller. Now, youth can participate. Um, this is getting more into the youth component of this year. Um, last year, we did have, uh, you know, youth participate in the conversations but we didn't have an ability for them to take the survey this year we have a youth specific survey and what's really important about that is if you are going to administer the youth survey it's important that you pick up a youth toolkit from our website um, and you look through that because we also have a, a pre-formatted uh, opt-out sheet um, 
for you to give out to the, to the student's parents as well. So basically what that means is um, we need to make sure that the parents have notification in advance and that if the parent does not want to have their student um, participate in the survey, they return that form. Otherwise, no form means we presume that they will take the survey. Um, we want you to connect over food and drink. We really think that's the glue that holds these conversations together. Um, we want you to mix it up. Uh, again, if you have more than 12 guests, really try to make the, each table as diverse as possible with, you know, um, I just think it's really cool when strangers come together to have these conversations because you really kind of get a chance to hear different perspectives. Um, we want the conversations to last about 45 to 60 minutes because we also want you to allow about 15 minutes to complete the survey. Um, and obviously to share your experience on social with the hashtag on the table FL. You've probably seen some of our foam hashtag signs around some of our promotions. Um, so we really wanna be able to make that trending again like we did last year. And this is just some more uh, information. This is kind of an example of what the opt out form will look like for the youth. Again, all of this will be available on the website. And again, to the survey for the youth survey is geared more towards middle and high school ages. Um, and only registered youth hosts will receive the survey link. So if, if you, again, if you're planning on um, uh, having youth at your table and you want them to take the survey, you have to let us know that you will have youth there. That's part of our host registration online. And the youth survey is considerably shorter than the regular survey. Um, it's some basic demographic questions followed by about, uh, I think, five questions for them. And no personally identifiable information is collected on the youth survey and all the responses are confidential. So make sure you include that in your information out to parents as well. Now, these are, this is a sneak peek at some of our conversation prompts for this year. Again, you'll see that we always start off with asking, you know, what are the things that people love about where they live? Um, you can view all of our uh, conversation prompts online at on the table um, Again, this is just to kind of familiarize you with um, some of the topics that we're having and the conversations that come with it. As you can see, they're very general. And again, you can just um, contextualize them for your audience. Now, what happens after the conversation is done? After the conversation is done is the most important part because uh, that's the time that you administer the survey. And I think the biggest criticism of an uh, event like this is people, they have a good talk, they feel really good, but then they leave the table feeling like nothing actually is going to change. Um, and we really feel like this is the one tangible takeaway. This is the thing that people can rest their, you know, rest on that this can help affect change. Um, as they respond to the survey, we're part of a national cohort of, of um, community foundations that are hosting on the table. And so we'll get into a little bit of how the survey is built in a second, but this is really just, this is the, the big takeaway. And so we've got a bunch of different ways that you can administer the survey. We have a text code, OTTFL, to the number right there, 797979. Uh, we'll also email a link to all the youth hosts, as we mentioned, and then the survey link for just the adults will also be available on onthetablefl.com. Uh, you want to make sure you submit your host wrap-up sheet. That's available both in print and online. Um, the meal reimbursements for nonprofits open up um, on the, the next day, November 14th, and it's first come, first serve. So once we're out of funds for that, um, will be out, um, and basically it's going to be, um, we're allowing nonprofits to apply for up to $1,000 in meal reimbursements, um, 
per organization. Now that's also um, averaging to about $10 a person. So, um, so either $10 a person that you have at your event, or if you're up to 100 people, if you exceed 100 people, you're capped at $1,000. So once again, that's $10 per person for the meal reimbursements up to $1,000. So if you exceed 100 people, you still only can get up to $1,000. Again, we wanna remind you just to share your conversations both on social media and through your networks. We've often found that, that when people host uh, breakfast time or like brunch time conversations, it actually can encourage participants to then go and see how easy it is to host a conversation of their own and then do it later in the day, either during lunch or after work. Um, so we really want to encourage you to encourage your participants to do the same and then share what, what happens, you know, what actions and what connections emerge from your conversation as well. Um, you know, we are going to use the results of the survey to help um, our grant making. We're going to use it to help our advocacy. Um, and I know not a lot of other nonprofits and other and organizations use the survey for demographic studies. They use this survey results um, to kind of get a better feel for their immediate community because all of the results are going to be customizable um, in the community impact report. You can look at last year's just to see uh, what we're talking about uh, on our website. So here's a little bit more information about the survey itself. Um, like I said, we're part of a national cohort of community foundations that are hosting on the tables. So about two thirds of the survey for adults will be a national questions that all the different uh, on the table events are gonna be asking their participants. And then we've customized um, the last third to be specific to Palm Beach and Martin County. Um, so those, that's really gonna be like the meat of the survey for us um, to use in our community impact report. Uh, we believe the report will be available around spring of 2020. Again, it's going to be sortable data that um, everybody in the public can use, and it really will be the launch pad for action for us and hopefully for um, anyone else that wants to use that information. So if you have any questions, I know we kind of breezed right through this, um, feel free to call us at the number below. You can also email on the table at cfpbmc.org. Um, again, everything we discussed information wise and resource wise is on our website. So you can um, view those as well. We also have a video recap of last year and a video about the survey results as well. Um, we encourage you to view that. We'll provide a link below in the, in the, uh, in the, in the video description. So what's next? We just want to make sure that you register as a table host. If you haven't already, you can do that on our website. Um, share this with your network, encourage other people to host a conversation. It really is so easy to do, um, you know, and we will um, help you in any way that we possibly can. Um, both myself, Stephanie, the whole rest of the team, we'd be happy to, um, you know, meet with you, speak to your organization, um, you know, whatever, whatever you need us to do to help you have the best possible outcome from the table. So that's all we've got. Um, I just want to thank you so much for tuning in and um, we hope to see you on November 13th. And if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us.